There's a rumor going around. If you like this video and subscribe you will meet Kirito and be gifted his Dark Repulsor Blade. Hi guys this is the first part of, what if Naruto mastered every element? I hope you enjoy, a loud menacing howl echoed throughout the night as the Kayubi no Kitsune attacked the peaceful village of Kanahagakur Konoha. Each ninja that was sent to the battle to stop the Kayubi were considered masters. Shuriken and Kanai flew through the air piercing the large Kitsune's belly, but didn't have any effect, for the fox just forced the weapons out of that area using Yukai and then healed itself. The fox roared again, storm clouds appeared out nowhere and the fox then started using its claws and teeth to tear any shinobi that dared to attack it to shreds and then the fox brought out its most fearsome weapon. The large, nine whip-like tails and started to destroy buildings taking lives along with the infrastructure. You foolish humans stand no chance against me, but because of your courage to try and stop me from destroying your pathetic village, you all have my respect. Dot dot, before you die, B-W-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. After the fox's little speech the fox resumed its destruction with a large vulpine grin on its face as everything in its path was destroyed. Kaden. Gukaku no Jutsu a group of ninja yelled. Large fireballs blasted out of their mouths and hit the large fox in its face hoping to at least hurt it if not kill it with that blow. The smoke then cleared and to the ninja's surprise there wasn't even a scratch on the beast's face. The shinobi gasped in fear and horror. Nothing would be able to stop the Kayubi. That tickled, the fox said with a large grin. Its large red eyes stared down the shinobi, metaphorically, turning those who looked into it to stone. The Kayabi's ears then perked up and then started to growl as its new enemy a giant toad wearing what looked like a bathrobe and carrying a big ass dagger, with a man on its head. The man was carrying a bundle in his arms. However this is no ordinary man, this is the famous blonde-haired Yandaimi Hokage nicknamed as the Yellow Flash, Namikaze Minato. Kayubi Yubaka why are you attacking Konoha, bellowed the toad to Kayubi. The fox snorted at the toad. Gamabunta A.N. The giant toad, you always were a fool, now step aside before I have to crush you with this pathetic village roared the Kayubi. Never, Bunta said with an icy tone and a huge amount of killing intent towards the fox. The toad and fox then began to battle, and while this was going on Minato was doing some hand signs that would end being the last ones he would ever make. Bunta I'm going to start the ceiling, yelled Minato his summon. Alright, Bunta then backed away as Minato did some hand signs. Snake boar ram rabbit dog rat bird horse snake fuin jutsu, shiki fuin the young blonde hokage yelled. The kayubi then stared at the man and then a ghostly image appeared behind Minato. The death god it's not possible how could a mere human summon such a thing. The death god's arm then reached through Minato's stomach and headed towards the kayubi. Kuso I don't wanna die. Kuso move move. But the Kayubi legs refused to move as the death god's arm reached close and closer and finally the arm reached into the Kayubi's body and ripped out its soul and then sealed it into the bundle in Minato's arms in a really bright flash of light. The Kayubi then screamed its last as the remainder of its soul was torn out and sealed and then its body disappeared never to be seen again. The ninja yelled out in victory, their Hokage did what no one else could. But then the body of the Hokage started to fall of Gamabunta's head. People ran to catch him as his body plummeted towards the ground, the small bundle still in his arms, but Bunta caught him and rested him gently on the ground. The shinobi started to cry as they saw the dead body of their once great leader. Then Sarutobi Hirazan, the Sandame Hokage along with Jiraiya, Sarutobi's student and Minato's teacher came to the scene and saw the man with a grim look on each of their faces. The bundle in his arms then began to cry and Sarutobi immediately took the bundle from the Yondime's cold, dead arms. He removed the cloth to show a young baby with blonde hair and three marks on his cheeks which looked like whiskers and blue eyes, with a large seal on its stomach which was glowing as it was being burned into the boy's skin. The glowing stopped and the baby stopped crying. That's a seal designed to seal the Kayabi's soul into the boy's body and also give the Kayabi's chakra to the boy to add to his own growing chakra coils, said Jiraiya as he was an expert on seals and even created some of his own. When the ninja present heard this they thought the demon was the boy and immediately shouted to kill the demon and what not. Some even threw Kanai to kill the baby, but Jiraiya blocked them all. What the hell is wrong with you all can't you see this boy here as a hero? Why can't you see that? Jiraiya yelled to them. Because Jiraiya-sama that thing is not a boy it's a duh, but the man never got to finish his statement as Jiraiya shoved a Rasengan into the man's chest and sent him flying. Anyone else want to say something about my godson? 
Question mark quote, such fools they don't even know the difference between a demon and a young burden with something no one should have to deal with thought Saratobi. No one answered but some had shocked expressions on their faces at the news of Jiraiya being the boy's godfather. Some of the shinobi present then truthfully went over to Jiraiya's side as an act of believing that the boy was a hero not a monster. After the little episode all the people who sided with Jiraiya then Shunshin no justued back to the village to present the news. Konoha the next day the next day Sarutobi called together the entire village for an announcement. The whole village appeared outside the Hokage Tower. There on the balcony of the tower watching the crowd was the Sandame. Everyone stopped talking and mumbling about why the Hokage called together the entire village for an announcement, but whatever it was it must be important. My treasured villagers, Sarutobi started, due to the death of our beloved Yandaimi Hokage I will be reinstated into the position of Hokage again. The people were sad for the death of their leader, but cheered at the news that someone they can trust will be their leader. Also as you all know the Kayubi was defeated, but the Kayubi was not completely destroyed. The villagers grew reckless when they heard this and began to murmur among themselves. Don't fret my people for the Yondaimi has sealed the spirit of the Kayubi into a young baby, Uzumaki Naruto and Naruto is to seen as a hero and any child his age is to not know of the Kayubi being sealed in him or try to kill Naruto else you will face execution as punishment. Hokage-sama why are you telling us to not to kill the demon brat? Said one of the villagers and others also began to question their Hokage. Sigh these people are such bakas just like those other ninja. They only see the demon not a young boy, and obviously most of them are. Well that is all, said the Sandame Hokage and with that he left to do what most likely be tons of paperwork. This is the beginning of the tale of Uzumaki Naruto. The Elemental Fox. Twelve years later it was a beautiful day in the village of Kanahagakur, the birds are singing, the sun is shining brightly in the sky, the villagers were walking the streets doing their daily routines. The Sandame Hokage watched his beloved village from the Hokage Tower with a small smile on his face. It really was a peaceful, relaxing day. N-A-R-U-T-O-O-O-O. Okay, maybe not so peaceful and relaxing and with that the Hokage looked at the Hokage faces to discover them covered with graffiti. The Hokage faces were stone monuments that were to show all the Hokage for the people of Konoha to remember there was someone looking out for them and now said faces were all colored with red swirls and what looked like blood, obviously red paint coming from their nostrils. The Hokage sighed and then went to combat the most hated enemy of every cage, paperwork. I wish I knew how to get this stuff done quicker because this is bullshit. Down in the streets of Konoha a young 12-year-old boy wearing an orange jumpsuit and blue ninja sandals was running through the streets of Konoha. He had spiky blonde hair, electric blue eyes and on each side of his cheek, he had three whisker-like marks and wearing a pair of goggles on his forehead, and even some of the Anbu Black Ops were following him. This is Uzumaki Naruto, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yoko. Ha 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 you'll never catch me you dickless homos, yelled our blonde protagonist. Get back here you little gaki so you can face your punishment, yelled a few of the shinobi. Never, Naruto cried out in retaliation to their threat, you guys just don't have the balls to do what I just did, he added with a foxy grin on his face. It was true what he said though everyone had too much respect towards the Hokage to do such an act. Jumping past a fence Naruto sped away with the Chunin and Junin still hot on his trail. The Anbu, the greatest ninja assassins in all of Konoha, could not put up with any more humiliation of not being able to catch a 12-year-old boy and left. A few seconds later the fence started to laugh. Naruto dropped his disguise which was a sheet that was colored in the same shade and had the same characteristics as the fence. This was a very often used disguise by Naruto as a use of escape after his pranks, he he he, those guys just can't catch me, Deibeo, he said with a large fox-like grin on his face. Naruto then turned to go when his face suddenly smacked into something. Itai, Naruto looked up with a pained expression on his face from coming in contact with a chunin vest that belonged to his ninja academy teacher Yumino Aruka. The scarred face ninja looked down on Naruto with a glare that could kill someone. He he he, hi Aruka sensei, he said with a sheepish smile, how are you today? How does he always manage to find me, Naruto thought, Naruto you, re supposed to be in class, he yelled. Then his voice calmed as though nothing had happened, now come with me you little gaki, and Aruka dragged the blonde, who had a scowl on his face, back to the academy. Naruto what am I going to do with you, the young Chunin thought with a confused expression on his face. 
Back at the academy, Naruto was tied to a chair in front of the whole class which was laughing at his predicament. Naruto looked down at the ground with a scowl on his face, I'll show them, Naruto thought to himself. I'll show them all. Once I become a genin I'll remove this stupid mask of happiness and show my true self then all of them will give me the respect I deserve, especially Sakura. Outside of Naruto's thoughts the class had stopped laughing and looked at Naruto who seemed to be in deep thought, which was a surprise to the whole class as the blonde was always chatting about becoming Hokage and ramen and acting like an idiot. Hey Dobi are you alive? Uchiha Sasuke called to the blonde enigma. Sasuke is the top rookie of the academy and a big emo freak whose hair looks like a chicken's ass painted black. The blonde still didn't respond and Aruka started to grow worried for Naruto had never been so quiet for this long. After a few minutes Naruto looked up and saw everyone staring at him. He blinked. What? Why's everybody looking at me like that? He questioned. Aruka sighed in relief glad to have the blonde loud mouth back in the real world. Now, seeing how that Naruto has returned to the land of the living, he started. Naruto scowled at that remark. You all shall now to the henge no jutsu and henge into me because of Naruto's inability to come to class on time. The whole class groaned and shot a series of rude remarks and curses towards our blonde hero. The students lined up and each one performed a perfect henge of their teacher. Haruno Sakura, called Aruka. Sakura was one of the fangirls of Sasuke. She has long, pink hair and emerald green eyes and wears a red dress and blue ninja sandals. With a poof of smoke she performed her transformation. Aruka nodded in approval and Sakura squealed with excitement. She turned around to face Sasuke who had already had his turn, Sasuke-kun did you see that, were you impressed? She told asked, shouted to her self-proclaimed love. Sasuke didn't respond, Uzumaki Naruto, time to prank that stupid teacher, he doesn't understand what I've been going through and for that I'll make him suffer. B-W-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. Perform your henge Naruto, said Uruka. Sure sensei, poof. Out of the poof of smoke stood a totally nude blonde and attractive young woman who had pigtails and smoke that covered her private areas. Hey Aruka sensei I call this my Oriok no jutsu, said the blonde beauty. Aruka was then blown back really, really far due to a rather large nosebleed. Naruto cut the stupid tricks. Aruka yelled while using humongous scary head no jutsu. Alright I'll do a normal henge, responded Naruto. Naruto then transformed into a perfect copy of Aruka sensei reverted back to normal and walked away with a large grin on his face unaware of the pale eyes of a young love-struck Hayuga Hinata watching his back. Ninja Academy tomorrow, good morning class, Uruka greeted to his students. Good morning Uruka sensei, all the students replied. As you all know today is the day you all are to have your genin exams so please be prepared. Advised Uruka, this exam comes in three parts, the first part is a written exam, then you have a weapons test and then we test you on the Bunshin no Jutsu. Is everyone clear? Yes sensei, replied the academy students. Right the exams will begin, now. Kuso, thought Naruto, even though my dumbness is a mask my ability to pass one stupid paper isn't, and I can't even do a bunch in to save my life, no I mustn't give up Datebayo. Baruka tallied up the marks and said how everyone passed, including Naruto but barely, who showed his signature foxy grin while everyone stared at him in disbelief. Next was the weapons test. Naruto, for this part of the exam decided to let down his mask. You had to throw 10 kanai and try to hit a bullseye, and of course Naruto decided to show off by getting a bullseye on a few targets without looking and even threw multiple kanai for a few more of the targets and got a perfect score. Kuso thought the silver-haired academy teacher Mizuki. At this rate the gaki will pass the exam, but he'll fail the bunshin part and Aruka will fail him he he he. Alright class time for the ninjutsu test. Aruka announced. Student after student passed and walked off with their hitai a n, um that's how you spell it right. Then it was Naruto's turn. Uzumaki Naruto, you're up. Called Aruka. All right Naruto perform three bunshins and you will pass, but don't and you fail. Naruto nodded, accepting the circumstances. Then Naruto gathered some chakra for the jutsu and then in a large poof of smoke the jutsu was activated. When the smoke cleared one pale looking Naruto bunshin that looked like it had just went through torture and had diarrhea appeared. Baruka twitched at the poor attempt at making the bunshin. Then he breathed in deeply and then calmly said, I'm sorry Naruto I know you tried your best, but you fail. Naruto looked down at the ground with a grim look on his face. Oh come on Aruka, 
Naruto did try his best just let him pass, said Mizuki sensei. Naruto looked back up with hopeful eyes, but then drooped back into depression after being rejected the second chance or rather fourth chance since he failed the exam three times. Naruto then left the academy and sat on the swing where he had always sat since he was five. He stared at all the students each wearing a hitai 8 on their foreheads, arms etc. And chatting with their parents, something he didn't have. This pushed Naruto's depression to be even greater and then not being able to stand watching it anymore he ninja jumped back to his apartment with an unexpected visitor following him and this visitor had a large sadistic grin. Naruto's apartment roof Naruto sat on the roof of his apartment staring at the setting sun in the distance with a sad expression on his face. Then a friendly tap on the shoulder freed him from his daydreaming. He turned around in surprise and saw, Mizuki sensei ww what are you doing here? Ha this Tem believes he tricked the great prankster Uzumaki Naruto, then he is gravely mistaken, Naruto thought to himself. Mizuki smiled a friendly smile at Naruto. Don't be so hard on Aruka it's just how he is. Mizuki told Naruto, ever since he lost his parents his life has been well um how I can put this um hard to understand. Naruto looked at Mizuki with a confused expression on his face. But I can tell you a secret way on how to become a genin and pass your exam. Mizuki told Naruto. Naruto looked at Mizuki with a big grin. Mizuki smiled a big grin also, but for a different reason. I have his complete and undivided attention now ha 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 ha. Yumino Aruka was lying down on his bed thinking about what the Hokage told him about Naruto after the graduation exams. Flashback Aruka entered the door to the Sandame Hokage's office with a nervous attitude. The Hokage only called him in to see about the academy students, but the messenger that called him to the office said it was an emergency. Ah Aruka good to see you, I trust you are well. Sarutobi greeted the young Chunin. Yes I am Hokage-sama. So what was the emergency you wanted me to see you about? Asked the Karayas Academy teacher. The old Hokage took a smoke of his tobacco pipe before answering. I heard Naruto didn't pass his exams this year. The Hokage said with a far off look in his eyes. Well of course he did Hokage-sama. It's just that he's always fooling around instead of studying, Baruka said. Ha ha ha, well I remember when a young scarred-nosed academy student used to do the same thing, the Hokage said in Naruto's defense. Baruka laughed lightly knowing that Sarutobi was talking about him. Baruka Yukemo Naruto is a lot like you, he's an orphan and he never gives up, but Aruka, do you know why Naruto acts like the class clown? Sarutobi asked staring hard at Aruka. Baruka shook his head saying no. It's because he seeks attention and for the people to acknowledge his existence and see him for who he is instead of the burden he was given, the Hokage answered. Baruka dropped his head in shame at not being there for Naruto at not realizing his mistake sooner. You may leave now Aruka, oh and Aruka please try to help Naruto when he's struggling all he needs is a loving hand to guide and he will become an excellent shinobi, Sarutobi said with a grandfatherly smile. Baruka nodded and smiled as well and left with a respectful bow. End flashback then Aruka heard a frantic knocking on his door after his little flashback. He got off his bed and walked to the door. He opened it to see a panicking Mizuki. Mizuki what are you doing here what's wrong? Aruka asked getting a bit frantic himself. It's Naruto, Aruka. He snapped and stolen the forbidden scroll. Hokage-sama wants us to meet him immediately. Mizuki yelled. What? Hold on I'll go get dressed. Baruka said as he rushed to his room and put on his chunin vest and sandals and hitai 8 and then rushed to the Hokage tower where other chunin and some janin were waiting talking about what would happen to the scroll in Naruto's hands. Settle down people, called the Hokage to his trusted ninja. As you all know Naruto has stolen the forbidden scroll and we need to find him and quickly for the kayubi within Naruto could take over his body and use one of the jutsu in that scroll to break free so I want you all to bring back the scroll in Naruto. Alive, the Sarutobi said with the last word dripping with killing intent towards those who were thinking of harming Naruto. Now Ike, the Hokage said in a commanding voice. Hi, the ninja said and then blurred away. Meanwhile in a nearby forest Naruto was sitting down in the forest looking over the scroll with a serious look on his face. Okay so the first jutsu here is Kajbunshin no jutsu. This jutsu is very useful. The user creates perfect solid copies of him herself and when dispelled the user gains information or techniques the clone has learned, Naruto read to himself. Naruto then smiled his famous foxy grin, he could have endless sparring partners, pranking buddies and he could jutsus in less time. 
Okay I'll start learning this jutsu and then once I master it I'll learn the other jutsu I find useful to add to my jutsu repertoire, Naruto said and then began practicing his soon to be signature technique. Back with Aruka Aruka was jumping on the roofs of Konoha as he looked for the blonde Jinchuriki all the while a little somebody was following the chunin in silence. Where are you Naruto? Aruka asked yelled to himself and then sped off and then headed towards the forest when he felt a large chakra signature coming from it. I better hurry, Aruka mentally told himself and hurried towards the forest. Back with Naruto two hours later, ah yes even though it's been two hours I've done it. I've learned at least six jutsu from the scroll and they all seemed pretty cool and powerful. Naruto sighed and then took a break. Aruka then saw a little orange speck below when he was jumping through the branches of the forest. That must be Naruto, no one else in the leaf village wears orange besides Naruto. Aruka thought to himself and dropped down below and there sat Naruto with a smile on his face when he saw Aruka. Hey Aruka sensei there you are. I was gonna look for you after I rested up, but now that you're here you're gonna pass me for sure with these jutsus I learned for extras credit. Naruto said excitedly. Aruka looked at Naruto with a confused expression, what do you mean Naruto? Aruka asked his student not understanding. Mizuki sensei told me if I learned some jutsu from this here scroll, Naruto said patting the scroll as though it was a cute little puppy, I'd pass with flying colors, Naruto said. Ha, huh, Naruto thought, I know Mizuki is just tricking me into giving him the scroll so he could get power. Then a whooshing sound was heard and then a multiple number of shuriken and kunai came out from the brush and headed towards Naruto. Naruto was ready to dodge but saw that he was too late to avoid them and shut his eyes tightly and prepared for the pain, but was then roughly shoved aside by Aruka who was hit by the flying pointy things of death. Luckily the Chunin vest protected him as the weapons didn't pierce his skin, but some weapons caught the edge of his sleeves and pinned to a tree and a stray kanai had stuck him in the leg causing blood to flow profusely from the wound. Then on a branch stood Mizuki, but with the grin of a madman on his face instead of his kind smile. Mizuki how could you betray the leaf village and why? Baruka yelled his question at the now former academy teacher and now traitor. Very carefully Aruka as for the why it was all for the quest of power. With that scroll, Mizuki yelled pointing at the scroll which was now attached to Naruto's back, I will learn very powerful techniques and gain enough power to kill everyone in the Konoha. Mizuki said followed by a maniacal laugh. Naruto stood there looking between his two senseis as they quarreled with each other. Mizuki's gaze then shifted towards Naruto. Give me the scroll you little gaki, Mizuki demanded Naruto. No Naruto don't give him the scroll, Baruka yelled. He's going to use the scroll to learn techniques to destroy the village. Naruto since you're about to die I'll tell you a little secret kept by the Hokage, Mizuki said. No Mizuki stoop, Baruka yelled. What secret? Naruto asked curious as to what this secret was. Well you see Naruto the Yondaimi Hokage didn't really kill the Kayubi no Kitsune 13 years ago, he had to seal its soul into a little baby boy and do you know who that boy is Naruto? Mizuki asked in a voice so sweet it could make you sick. Naruto shook his head even though he knew about Kayubi already, he just wanted to play along a little bit longer, just so you know I'm putting a flashyback of how Naruto met Kayubi since he already knows of it and stared at Mizuki wide-eyed wanting to know who the boy was. Well Naruto that boy is, Mizuki started with a sadistic grin. No Mizuki don't do this, yelled Aruka in a pleading voice. That boy is you Naruto, yelled Mizuki. Naruto chuckled, and then his chuckling got louder and louder until it became full-blown out laughter. What's so funny Gaki? The traitor asked in an annoyed tone. Well Mizuki sensei. It's just that I already know I met the Kayubi in my mindscape when I was 5 years old. He saved me from a mob by blowing them all away with chakra. Naruto answered. Mizuki gasped his plan was in ruins now. Naruto then stopped laughing and then glared at Mizuki with all the killer intent he could muster, which is a lot by FYI. Mizuki froze on his tree branch as he couldn't move from the amount of killer intent being directed at him. Prepare to be put into a world of hurt sensei since you hurt Aruka sensei you will die here and now, Naruto said angrily. K-A-G-E-B-U-N-S-H-I-N no jutsu, Naruto yelled then nine clones appeared in a puff and then five of them rushed Mizuki knocking him of the tree branch and effectively pinning him to the ground. Mizuki tried to fee himself but couldn't budge. The other four clones and the original Naruto then began to perform hand signs and judging by the amount of chakra being molded you could tell it was going to be a big finish. One clone then ended its hand signs on Tiger Seal, 
another on bird, one on snake, one on dragon and the original on rat. Then clones yelled out the names of their jutsus. Karyuendan no jutsu fire dragon blast jutsu Swiryudan no jutsu water dragon blast jutsu. Doryuendan no jutsu earth dragon blast jutsu Raryudan no jutsu lightning dragon blast jutsu. Furyuendan no jutsu wind dragon blast jutsu the clones and the original Naruto then took a deep breath and the dragons of the element they called upon. Dragons of fire, water, earth, lightning and wind then flew out of each clone's mouth respectively and flew towards Mizuki with great speed and power in their glowing yellow eyes. The dragons roared before consuming the traitorous Chunin in a mixture of the elements and the clones pinning down Mizuki vanished in a poof of smoke when the attacks hit. A huge smoke cloud was formed and when it cleared Mizuki was a pile of ash formed by the Karyuendan. Baruka smiled at Naruto as he began pulling out the kunai and shuriken lodged in his clothing and the one in his leg. Naruto was panting from using so much chakra. Naruto come here and close your eyes I have something to give you, Baruka called to Naruto. Naruto ran over to his teacher and closed his eyes, he felt his goggles being pulled of and then something cottony, silky was placed where his goggles were. Naruto smiled knowing what it was that was placed on his forehead. Okay open your eyes now, Baruka said excitedly Naruto opened his eyes and blinked a few times to get used to the sunlight. He looked at a smiling Aruka who had no hit I ate on his forehead. Naruto grinned his famous foxy grin and then jumped at Aruka. Congrats Naruto you graduate and tonight we'll celebrate with some ramen, Aruka said smiling. Domo arigato Aruka sensei, Naruto said happily. Then he and Aruka walked off to go home. Meanwhile in the Hokage Tower Sarutobi was watching the whole thing and was very surprised when he heard Naruto had made contact with the fox and knew he had to talk to Naruto about it later, but for now he was going to smoke his pipe and try to at least finish the paperwork. Uzumaki Naruto was walking into his classroom with a large smile on his face because due to the events yesterday Naruto had passed and graduated and became a genin or so he thought. Naruto entered the classroom and saw everyone staring at him with confused looks on their faces. Hey Dobi only students who graduated are supposed to come today, said one random student. Hey you, Baka look at this, Naruto said pointing at the hit I ate on his forehead, this is proof of my graduating so shut your damn mouth. The student then began to silently fume and began mumbling at being humiliated like that by the class Dobi. Meanwhile everyone was wondering what the Dobi did to graduate. Then Sasuke spoke up, so how did you graduate, he asked. All the fangirls started saying the same thing not wanting to do anything without their precious Sasuke-kun. Naruto looked at Sasuke and took a deep breath for dramatic effect. Everyone in the class listened intently on what Naruto had to say for they too were curious as to how Naruto graduated. It's a secret, Naruto said in a calm tone with a huge grin on his face as he saw the class's reaction to his statement. Everyone's faces faltered while some sweat dropped. Come on Naruto please tell us. The pink-haired one known as Sakura asked in a tone as sweet as sugar. Naruto turned at her and glared. No Haruno, so do me a favor and shut the hell up. You're giving me a headache. Naruto told her, everyone in the class, except Sasuke who raised his eyebrow in a curious fashion, gasped at what Naruto had just told Sakura. They all knew that Naruto had never called Sakura anything but Sakura-chan because he had a crush on her, but based on what he just said one thing came to the other students' minds. He doesn't like Sakura anymore, they all thought. Naruto then walked up to take a seat and saw there was one empty seat next to the Hyuga heiress, Hanada. He then went and took his seat next to her and noticed the quick glances she took at him and blushed when he caught her staring at him. Naruto sighed and then faced her. Hanada look, I know you are taking those glances at me when you think I'm not looking because I know you like me, Naruto started. Hanada squeaked when she heard that Naruto knew about her no longer secret crush on the blonde Jinchuriki. Look Hanada the thing is that I don't like you in that way, Naruto said. Hanada's head then dropped when she heard this news thinking she no longer had a chance to gain his love. But, he continued, Hanada looked up with hope in her eyes. There's a but, she thought. Maybe if we hung out more my feelings for you could change from that of a friend to something more, he finished. Hanada then looked at Naruto and her face then became like that of a tomato and then fainted from the blood rush. Naruto luckily caught Hanada before she could fall and then rested her down onto the desk so it would look like she was sleeping. Baruka then walked into the classroom and saw all of his students staring at Naruto. They must all be wondering how Naruto graduated, 
Baruka thought with a chuckle. All right class, settle down, Baruka said. The class immediately stopped their conversations about how and why Naruto graduated. As you all know you are now Genin and I will be calling the team members for each team. Each team will have three members and will be trained by a Jonin sensei. Okay I will now call out the team numbers and their members. Baruka said, all of the Sasuke fangirls thought the same thing. That Sasuke was going to be on their team. Baruka called the names of the first six teams and told them who their Jonin sensei was and then came. Team 7 is Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke, your Jonin sensei is Hitaki Kakashi, Baruka called. Naruto immediately stood up to object as to why Sasuke and Sakura were on his team. Baruka told him it was because of the best to worst ratio and that was that. Naruto then sat down and thought of pranks to try and torment Sasuke. Sakura then hit Naruto in the head while Sasuke just looked out the window. Teammate is Hayuga Hanada, Abarame Shino and Inazuka Kiba, your sensei is Yuhi Kuranai. Baruka said, Kiba whooped with joy as his name was said while his dog Akamaru barked in approval, Hanada, who had now woken up from her fainting spell was thinking about what Naruto had just told her while Shino just remained silent. Now team 10 is Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Choji and Nara Shikamaru your sensei is Serutobi Asuma and that's all the teams please wait until your Jonin senseis arrive to pick you up, and before I leave just one piece of advice, when on a mission even one little mistake could cause disaster for your team and jeopardize the mission, so be careful out there. Baruka said with a smile and then left the classroom. Then all the Jonin senseis came to pick up their genin teams, all except for team 7 who had been waiting for over 3 hours and counting. When is this guy going to come and pick us up, it's been over 3 hours. Sakura complained. Naruto and Sasuke just shrugged, but then Naruto got an idea he looked around and found a stray bucket in the corner of the classroom. He went and picked it up and placed it above the door and secretly filled the inside of the bucket with chakra so it would add extra stickiness for when it fell on their sensei's head. What are you doing Naruto? Sakura asked. Just giving our sensei a little punishment for being late, Naruto replied with a foxy grin on his face. Dobi, our sensei is a john and he's not going to fall for such a pathetic prank, Sasuke said in a bored tone. Yeah Naruto, Sasuke-kun is right. Sakura said wanting to back up her crush's words, but inner Sakura thought it was a great idea and began to chuckle evilly. Naruto scowled at them both and went to take his seat when he heard footsteps approaching the door. They opened and the bucket fell on top of a mop of gravity-defying silver hair. The Jonin began to try and pry the bucket off his head while Naruto was laughing his ass off and bragging to Sasuke at how his prank had succeeded. Kakashi then finally pried of the bucket and glared at Naruto. That Gaki used chakra to stick the bucket to my head, Kakashi thought. Kakashi glare then changed to smile as his visible eye changed into an upside down you. My first impression of you all is that, I hate you three, Kakashi said, the three genin glared at him for disrespecting them. Well then meet me on the academy roof, so see ya, and he disappeared in a poof of smoke. The genin looked at each other and shrugged and left for the roof. When they reached GTHE roof they found their Jonin sensei waiting for them. Hey guys, about time you reached here, Kakashi said. The genin didn't answer and just sat down on the little bench that just happened to be there. Kakashi then cleared his throat and took out a little book called Ika Ika Paradise. So why don't you all tell me about yourselves, you know name, likes, dislikes, hobbies, favorite animal and dreams for the future. Kakashi asked his three new disciples. Sakura spoke up. Sensei why don't you go first? Sakura asked with a grin as she wanted to know about her mysterious one-eyed sensei. Kakashi sighed and put away his book. Okay my name is Hitaki Kakashi, my likes and dislikes are none of your business, my hobbies are a secret that no one should know about, my favorite animal is the dog and my dreams are none of your business, okay your turn Pinky, Kakashi finished with a smile. The three genin sweat dropped all the learned was his name and favorite animal. My name is Haruno Sakura, I like, she took a glance at Sasuke and giggled with a slight blush in her face, I dislike Naruto and perverts, Naruto didn't say anything as Sakura continued her description. My hobbies are, she took another glance at Sasuke and giggled, and my dreams for the future are, she looked again at Sasuke and blushed a deep crimson and giggled a bit louder than before. Kakashi sighed and shook his head at Sakura antics. This girl is more interested in boys than in being a ninja, I'm going to have snap her out of it soon or their teamwork will suck, Kakashi thought. 
Okay you next chicken head, Kakashi said pointing at Sasuke. Sasuke glared at Kakashi for insulting his hair. My name is Uchiha Sasuke, I like training in Kaiden Jutsus, I dislike fangirls and people who insult my hair, my hobbies are training, my favorite animal is the hawk and my dream is more of an ambition, I wish to restore my clan and kill a certain man, Sasuke finished, the last part dripping with killing intent. Looks like he's too focused on achieving power to kill his brother, I need to show him the art of teamwork so he can become truly strong, Kakashi thought. Okay you next blondie, Kakashi said pointing at Naruto. Okay my name is Uzumaki Naruto, I like training, learning new jutsus so I can add them to my repertoire of already amazing jutsus and ramen, I dislike Sakura and the 3 minutes it takes to cook ramen, my favorite animal is the fox and my dreams for the future is to become the greatest Hokage so that people will finally see for who I am instead of the burden that I carry, Naruto said with confidence. Kakashi smiled, I see a great future for this boy, all I have to do is bring up their teamwork and they'll do fine as a genin team, he thought. Okay guys meet me at the bridge at training ground 7 tomorrow for your true genin test at 9 o'clock a. M and don't eat breakfast you'll barf, Kakashi then turned to leave when Sakura asked, but sensei I thought we were already genin, why are we taking another test? Well Sakura the one at the academy was to test to see if you had the knowledge to be genin this true genin test is to test your skills to see if you truly be genin. Kakashi answered, Naruto come with me, Kakashi added. Naruto raised his eyebrows, why would their sensei want to talk to him so he just ignored it and walked with the one-eyed Janin. Naruto the Hokage wants me to escort you to his office for an immediate private conversation concerning your tenant, Kakashi told Naruto. Oh that's why, Gigi probably wants to know how I met Kayubi when I was 5, wait speaking of Kayubi I haven't talked to him in a while, Naruto thought. Hokage Tower Sarutobi's office knock knock. The Hokage raised his head when he heard the knock and his door. Come in, he called. The door opened to reveal the blonde Jinchuriki and the perverted Sharingan user. On Naruto, Kakashi, good to see you and Naruto congratulations on passing and becoming a genin. Sarutobi said with a grandfatherly smile. Naruto beamed and said a thank you to the old Hokage. Sajiji what did you want to talk to me about? Naruto asked. Naruto I wanted to talk to you about that night with Mizuki, the Hokage answered. Naruto nodded while Kakashi was getting very curious as to what was going on. Well Naruto on that night you said you had encounter with the Kayubi when you were 5 cared to explain how this came to be. Sarutobi asked. Kakashi's eye widened, Naruto knows and encountered the Kayubi, now I'm really curious he thought. Naruto nodded and proceeded to tell them the story. Well Gigi it started like this, Naruto started flashback. A young 5 year old Naruto was running from a mob of villagers turning every which way in order to lose them, but where he went they followed. Then he made a wrong turn and ended up at a dead end alley. We got you now demon, said one of the people in the mob. What did I do? I didn't do anything to you, Naruto screamed. Shut up demon spawn, we will kill you for your wrongdoings and for killing our friends and family, another person in the village said. Then Naruto felt pain everywhere as he was pummeled by fists and feet and stabbed by the occasional kunai. Then a voice appeared in Naruto's head. I can save you kid just tell me to make them go away and they will. Please make them go away please I don't want to be hurt anymore, Naruto told the voice. Then a large blast of red chakra exploded out of Naruto blowing away the villagers and knocking them out. Naruto then fainted from the strain of using that chakra and passed out. Sarutobi appeared on the scene and took Naruto to the hospital to be healed. In Naruto's mindscape Naruto was walking through a sewer-like complex, water splashing at his ankles with every step he took. Suddenly a loud breathing sound was heard some distance away. Naruto followed it to find himself in a large room with a huge cage. There in the cage was a large red eye staring at Naruto. Come here boy, the thing in the cage demanded. Naruto, not wanting to anger the thing walked forward. Then large claws went through the bars and tried to skewer Naruto, but Naruto didn't react on any way he just stood there staring at the claws. The claws then retracted back inside the cage. I like you kit, so sense of fear when face to face with the mightiest of biju, Kayubi no Kitsune, which just happens to be me. Kayubi told Naruto. Naruto eyes widened slightly. So you are the reason why the villagers hate me so much, but I can understand why they want to hurt me now. Though they are idiots if they cannot see the difference between the jailer and the tenant, Naruto said. Kayubi laughed at Naruto as he was talking to himself. 
Hey kid. The Kyubi interrupted Naruto's one-sided conversation. Naruto stopped talking and looked up at the fox. Yeah. Naruto responded. Well kid this is your mind so why not change the scenery a bit, I mean sewer pipes are so dull. How do I do that? Naruto asked the 9000 year old demon. Just think about a place for example a meadow and the place will change to that from a sewer to that of a meadow, so try it out, Kayubi told Naruto with a large vulpine grin. Naruto then closed his eyes and thought of a meadow, then a bright flash came out of nowhere. Naruto opened his eyes and instead of the sewer they were in a meadow with lush green grass, a small pond, a big blue sky and a few trees here and there. Good job Kit. Naruto looked to his left and a large fox about the size of a horse. Kayubi is that you? Naruto asked. Yes, yes it is Kit, but you're probably wondering why am I so small, Kayubi said. Naruto nodded at to why the Kayubi was so small. Well kid we demon foxes can change our size at will since we are master pranksters, Kayubi said with a grin. Anyway kid I was wondering do you want me to train in the art of the Kitsuneken? Naruto looked wide-eyed at the fox, the all-powerful Kayubi wanted to train him, him of all people. Naruto grinned and nodded in approval. The fox smiled and then a whirlwind of chakra formed around the fox and then when the wind died down there stood a man in about mid-thirties with red hair. Red eyes with black slits wearing a white and gold kimono, for males with silver flames on the bottom, and had two red furry fox ears peeking out of his red hair and nine fox tails swishing behind him. Kayubi is that your human form? Naruto asked. Why yes it is Kit, you know you're smarter than you look Naruto, Kayubi said. Naruto smiled his foxy grin at the compliment Kayubi gave him. Now Kit, Prepare to feel like shit because we will start your training tomorrow you will only stop to eat or if you have to use the bathroom understood, Kayubi asked, said. Naruto nodded agreeing to the terms Kayubi set for his training not realizing his mistake, but it's too late now. End flashback, and that was how I met Kayubi, and how I am now a master of the Kitsuneken, Naruto finished as his flashback story ended. The Hokage and Kakashi stared wide-eyed at Naruto, this boy was training with the fox and could communicate with it. The Hokage smiled, for Naruto now had someone to talk to if he was lonely. Well good for you Naruto, you've made a new friend and now have a second sensei to train you, said the Hokage. Kakashi on the other hand thought otherwise. Naruto how could you agree to train with the monster that nearly destroyed our village, and cost the Yandaimi his life? Kakashi practically screamed. Naruto turned to Kakashi and glared hard at him. Three things Kakashi, one Kayubi didn't attack Konoha intentionally. He told a man with eyes like a snake used a brain controlling jutsu on him and forced him to go and destroy Konoha. Two the Kayubi was the only one who took care of me in my times of need and trained me to defend myself while you Kakashi would not even give a second thought to train me and three Kayubi acts like a father to me than any other person in the world besides my real father, Naruto said his voice dripping with killer intent towards Kakashi. Kakashi looked down in shame it was true. He would have never agreed to train Naruto until now in the Kayubi, and he failed to protect Naruto when he was his Anbu guardian. But then realized who the snake-eyed man was and so did Sarutobi. It was Orochimaru, no doubt about. I'm sorry Naruto, I didn't know and also the man who probably took control of Kayubi was an S-class Konoha missing nin known as Orochimaru. Kakashi said hoping the last part will back up his apology, and it succeeded. Apology accepted senseis, now then, can you tell me about what we are gonna do for the test? Naruto asked excitedly. Kakashi sighed for being forgiven but then began to chuckle when Naruto asked about the test. You'll find out tomorrow Naruto, have some patience, Kakashi said with an upside down UI noting that he was smiling. Naruto nodded and then headed home to get some sleep. The next day our blonde hero groggily got up from his bed and took a quick shower and then dressed himself in some new clothes he never used to wear, that he got for his birthday. It was a black t-shirt with a red shuriken on the back and the kanji for Uzumaki on the front, which Naruto wore over his vest. The vest is a weighted vest that is kind of like a bulletproof vest that cops wear instead this one protects from kunai and shuriken, and some long blue pants like the ones from Shippuden except in blue which reached just below the ankles and his now black ninja sandals which he got from the sandame. He ate a small breakfast of cup ramen and milk and then headed out the door. Oh shit! Kayubi I ate breakfast when Kakashi sensei said not to now I'm gonna barf a whole lot, Naruto mentally said to father figure. Don't worry kid, I've heard that Kakashi is always late so that breakfast will do you some good and well I just to thank you for sticking up for me yesterday, but do you really think of me as a father? 
Kayubi said to Naruto. No problem, consider it a thank you for teaching me the Kitsuneken and those chakra control exercises, I'm gonna show that Uchiha Tem and Haruno bitch just what I can do and yes I do think of you as a father because you were there for me when I was hurt and comforted me whenever Sakura turned me down so arigato, Kayubi Tusen, Naruto said. Oh come on Kit don't do that you're making me tear up sob, it's just so nice to hear somebody say that to me, well then I will protect you with my entire being Naruto kid now hurry up it's almost 9 you're going to be late for your test. Naruto then cut of his connection to Kayubi and sped off towards training grounds 7 for the test. When Naruto arrived at the training grounds he found a brooding Sasuke ignoring a Sakura trying to ask him out on a date. Naruto chuckled at the sight and then greeted his teammates. Hey Sasuke Tem, Haruno-san, Naruto said as he greeted them. Dobi and it's about time you changed your clothes and developed some fashion sense. Sasuke greeted Naruto and continued to brood. Naruto just smiled and didn't say anything to counter Sasuke's insult. Hey Naruto, I was just wondering, why aren't you calling me Sakura-chan anymore? Sakura greeted, but was sad when Naruto didn't call her, Sakura-chan, like he used to. Wait why I am sad, this just gives me more time to try and swoon Sasuke, she thought. Because Haruno-san, you have lost my respect and so you must earn it back by becoming stronger if you are to get me to call you Sakura-chan again. Naruto said, well then Naruto I'll do my best to earn it back, Sakura said accepting this little challenge. Two hours later Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were lying down on the ground looking up at the clouds and well Sasuke and Sakura were starving, but noticed Naruto didn't look the least bit famished. Hey Dobi how come you don't look hungry? Sasuke asked. Well Tem it's because I ate breakfast, I heard how that Kakashi sensei is known to be late all the time so I ate breakfast, Naruto said with a tone of confidence. Sasuke and Sakura scowled when they heard this and continued to stare at the clouds. Poof. Then a puff of smoke appeared out of nowhere and there stood Kakashi. You're late, Sakura screamed, well I got lost on the road of life, Kakashi explained. Liar, Naruto screamed, Kakashi ignored them and then took out two bells from his weapon's pouch. Your test is to try and steal these bells from me by noon or else you guys will get to watch me eat the lunches I brought for you guys if you succeed. The genin now realized why he told them not to eat breakfast, it was for tortuous purposes. So if you want to succeed come at me with the intent to kill, your tests are chase now. Kakashi yelled, Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura then jumped into the brush to hide from their sensei. Kakashi although he could easily sense them knew they were taught well by Uruka, especially Naruto because since he got practice from his pranks, his stealth skills were by far the most impressive for Kakashi would never have been able to sense him if he hadn't learned about chakra detection. With Naruto Naruto was moving silently through the bushes to Sakura's location because he knew the true purpose of this test was to build teamwork, and Sakura was the closest one to him. He then reached Sakura and gently touched her shoulder. Sakura whipped around to scream, but Naruto, expecting that put his hand over her mouth to stop her from screaming, Listen Haruno, the true purpose of this test is to use teamwork to get those bells, Naruto whispered to her as he released his hand from her mouth. How do you know this? She asked Naruto side. Use your common sense Haruno, how else could we need a Jonin because individually we are weak against him, but if together we could be a match for him and might get the bells and if we succeed I'll call you Sakura-san from now on, Naruto said as though it were the most obvious thing in the entire universe. Sakura blushed in embarrassment because she never had thought of that and she would feel better if Naruto would start addressing her by her first name. She nodded, but realized a flaw in this. How are going to get Sasuke-kun to join us in this though? Sakura asked. Naruto grinned, leave that to me, he said in a confident tone and the both of them then headed up to find Sasuke. Meanwhile Sasuke was stuck up to his neck in dirt with an angry expression on his face at being humiliatingly defeated by Kakashi-sensei. Then he saw Naruto and Sakura walking towards him laughing at his prediacament. The great and mighty Uchiha Sasuke has been defeated, Naruto said while laughing. Sasuke just glared focusing his killer intent on Naruto. Come on Sasuke I'll get you out, but only if you agree to work with me and Sakura as a team to beat Kakashi Sensei and get those bells, Naruto said, Sasuke declined not wanting to give up on his Uchiha pride. Naruto groaned in annoyance and then slammed his hand down on the ground. He then pumped Chakra into the ground breaking down the ground's hold on Sasuke. Naruto then grabbed Sasuke by the collar and hoisted him up. 
Listen here Tem, the only way we could beat Kakashi Sensei is if we work as a team, you know what happens if you do it alone, you end up stuck in the ground like a loser and feel like a baka, so swallow your damn pride and help us, Naruto yelled at Sasuke. Sasuke remained silent, Naruto sighed and let go of Sasuke's collar reuniting him with the ground. Come on Sakura obviously Sasuke doesn't want to become a true genin, Naruto said and began to leave. Sakura didn't want to leave Sasuke-kun, but she knew Naruto was right so left with Naruto. Wait! Sasuke called to them. Naruto and Sakura smiled at each other, all according to plan. I'll work with you guys so what's the plan Dobi? Sasuke asked Naruto. Naruto grinned, oh he had a plan alright. Back with Kakashi, looks like they realized the true purpose of this exam, Kakashi thought with a smile. Then a flurry of kunai and shuriken flew towards him. Kakashi jumped up and avoided them, but then saw Naruto fly towards him and blocked a kick from him. Kakashi then grabbed Naruto by the ankles and spun and using the momentum slammed Naruto into the ground. Kakashi got up from the ground and saw the Naruto disappear in a poof of smoke. Kajbunshin he probably learned that from the scroll, Kakashi then snapped out of the thought when he saw a rather large Kaiten, Gukakayu no Jutsu courteous of Sasuke speeding towards him. Kakashi jumped to the side to avoid being burnt, but then he barely managed to avoid Sakura who had made a grab for the bells. Phew that was close, Kakashi thought, but then he saw he was surrounded by five Naruto clones each one doing a long set of hand seals. The clones then finished their hand seals and shouted the name of their jutsus. Kaiden. Karyuendan no jutsu, Sweden, Swiryuden nn jutsu. Doden. Doryuendan no jutsu, Raiden, Raryuden no jutsu. Fudden. Fueriwaden no jutsu, the five dragons of fire, lightning, Earth and wind was blown out of four of the clones' mouths except for the water dragon which came from the nearby river. Kakashi eyes widened at how Naruto was able to perform these high-level ninjutsu, and jumped before he could be hit with a barrage of the elemental dragons, but was too late to avoid being punched in the face by Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto. He looked up and saw three fists come crashing down on his face as he made his descent to the ground. The last thing he heard was the ringing of the clock he had set for noon and the jingling of bells before being claimed by darkness. One hour later Kakashi woke up to see the three genin smiling up at him. Kakashi tried to move but saw he was tied to the post with rope and his fingers were tied with ninja wire to prevent him from doing hand signs for the escape justu. Kakashi smiled, oh yeah this was going to be a team for the books. Okay guys can you untie because you pass, not only because you got the bells, but because you showed high levels of skill and teamwork and Naruto I was wondering where did you learn those jutsus? Kakashi asked. Sasuke and Sakura were wondering the same thing because those jutsu Naruto used were obviously very high level probably Jonin level. Naruto sighed, not wanting to keep secrets from his team he told them the story about how Mizuki had betrayed the village by stealing the forbidden scroll which Naruto had originally stole because he was tricked by Mizuki. But before Mizuki arrived Naruto had learned the five elemental dragon jutsus and Kajbunshin and how Mizuki told he and Aruka his plot not mentioning the part about Kayubi though, and how he, Naruto, got really mad and used the jutsus to kill Mizuki and how he was traumatized by the incident for a few days because he had made his first kill. The three of them were in shock at Naruto's story and knew by the tone that he wasn't lying. Hey Naruto could you, Sasuke said, maybe teach me the Karyuendan and Kajbunshin. Yeah Naruto, I want to learn the Kajbunshin too, Sakura chimed in. Now it was Naruto's turn to be in shock because he never thought Sakura and most of all Sasuke to ask him for help. Kakashi smiled just so you know they untied Kakashi during Naruto's little story, knowing they would get along fine. Sure guys I would be glad to, but you're going to need to build up your chakra reserves to use them. The reason I can do these jutsu is because I have a bloodline on my mother's side that gives me a larger chakra reserve than normal ninja at birth, Naruto told them. And no Kakashi this is not a joke Gigi Hokage told me about my mother when he asked me about the Mizuki incident after you had left, Naruto added leaving Kakashi shell shocked. Um Kakashi sensei, Sakura called, yes Sakura, Kakashi answered, about my dreams for the future, I change it to wanting to be a strong Kanushi in the future, Kakashi smiled, that's good to know Sakura, it really is, Kakashi said. Okay guys tomorrow I'll teach you all an exercise that will build up your chakra reserves, but for now go and have some fun and get some rest because tomorrow you'll be doing missions as an official genin team, Kakashi told them. 
The three genin nodded and left to go home with happy expressions on their faces because not only were they official ninja they had made friends with each other in order to help each other get stronger to help accomplish their dreams. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. The next part will be out soon.